And we're continuing with the second chapter of The Secret of the Underground Room by John Belairs. Johnny and the professor just wrapped up their visit with Father Higgins, who has found several strange notes, seen ghosts, and has been having dreams about his dead mother. And both Johnny and the professor are very worried about him. Weeks passed, and as the school year wound down toward its end, Johnny became involved in a lot of activities. He got a part in the Latin Club's play, which was a shortened version of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. He took piano lessons so he could do well in the June recital, and he played in chess tournaments with schools in nearby towns. But, but while all this was going on, he kept thinking about Father Higgins. One Friday evening in late June, Johnny was sitting in the kitchen with his grandfather. Johnny lived with his grandparents because his mother was dead and his father was flying a jet in the Air Force. Their home was a big white house across the street from the professor's stucco mansion, and it was full of homey, comfortable, old-fashioned furniture. The kitchen table was round and made of oak, with ball and claw feet. Johnny was drinking a Coke and talking about a movie that he and his friend Fergie had seen a few hours earlier. Grandpa Dixon, who was standing by the stove, warming some milk in a pan, was a tall, stoop-shouldered man with a few gray hairs strung across the freckled dome of his head. The flesh of his face was loose and wrinkly, and his eyes twinkled behind golden spectacles. Do you like pirate movies? Oh, do you like pirate movies? asked Grandpa as he poured the milk into a glass. I remember I once saw Douglas Fairbanks, and let me see, what was the name of it? The Seahawk, I guess. That was an old silent film, but it was still pretty good. You see, in those days... Hey, would you look at that? Johnny suddenly whirled around. Grandpa had rushed to the kitchen window, and he was peering anxiously out into the night. After a few seconds, he stepped back, took off his glasses, and rubbed his eyes. I must be seeing things, he mumbled as he put his glasses back on. Don't just think, though, it looked like he was there. Johnny was totally confused and alarmed. Who, Grandpa? Who did you see? Grandpa turned to Johnny with a wondering f frown on his face. Well, while I was talking to you a minute ago, he began slowly, I sort of glanced out the window, and I thought I saw Father Higgins standing out there under the street light, and Johnny's mouth f dropped open. Father Higgins? What would he be doing out there? Grandpa shrugged. Search me. It sure looked like it was him, though. Well, by the time I got to the window to have a closer look, he was gone. Can you beat that? Johnny felt queasy inside. His grandfather was not the kind of person who imagined things, and when he was wearing his glasses, his eyesight was pretty good. I'll run outside and have a look, said Johnny nervously. Yeah, you do that, said Grandpa. If it's him, ask him why he doesn't come in and see us. Fearfully, Johnny opened the screen door and stepped out into the backyard. It was a warm night, and the lightning bugs were winking under the chestnut tree that grew at the far end of the yard. Johnny padded across the wet grass, around the side of the house, and out onto the sidewalk. Lights were on in most of the houses on Fillmore Street, but no one was out walking. The old-fashioned street lamp glowed as Johnny glanced anxiously around. He peered into the dark mass of evergreen bushes that flew in front of the house next door. Father, he said timidly then cupped his hands to his mouth and called out more loudly, Father Higgins, are you there? Dead silence. In the distance, a door slammed, but that was all. With a troubled expression on his face, Johnny walked back to the house. As he stepped into the kitchen, he saw Grandpa sitting at the table, sipping his warm milk. The old man looked up. Johnny, did you find? Johnny shook his head. Nope, nobody, and it's kind of hard to believe that Father Higgins is playing hide-and-seek with us. Grandpa gave Johnny a sheepish look. You mean you think I imagined it? Tears sprang to Johnny's eyes, and he rushed to his grandfather's side. Oh, no, Grandpa. I didn't mean anything like that. Honest, I didn't. Only, it's all just, well, kind of strange. Grandpa rubbed his chin thoughtfully. Yeah, he said. It sure is. There was a long pause, and the two of them just looked at each other. Then wearily, the old man shoved his chair back and dragged himself to his feet. Well, good night, Johnny, he said as he started for the door. Sleep tight. Johnny stood watching his, as his grandfather left the room. Cold fear clenched his heart. He could not explain what his grandfather had seen, but it scared him. A puzzled look on his face. Johnny turned out the kitchen lights, went upstairs, and began taking off his clothes. After he'd changed into his pajamas and brushed his teeth, he sat down on his bed and watched the long linen curtains sway in the night breeze that blew in through the open window. His feeling of uneasiness had not gone away. It had gotten worse, but he was also tired and very much wanted to go to sleep. He looked around at the, at the scarred bureau and tall walnut clothes chest, 
that stood in the corner. It was a nice room to be in, even when you weren't feeling particularly good. Johnny walked over to the door and turned out the overhead light. Then he pulled back the top sheet and climbed into bed. Ah, it felt good to be tucked in between cool, sweet-smelling sheets. Grandma kept cedar nuts in all the bureau drawers, and the wonderful smell of them filled Johnny's nostrils. His nervousness had died, and sleep was stealing over him. But after he had drifted off, he found that he was having a very unpleasant dream. He dreamed that he was still asleep in bed, but somehow he was able to see the moonlit room clearly. He heard a sound, a ghostly knocking was coming from the clothes closet. At first it was faint, but gradually it grew louder, and then the panel doors started to shake, and the curved brass handles moved up and down. Still dreaming, Johnny felt his fear mount until it became blind panic, and at that moment he woke with a start. The peaceful room lay in darkness, except for one long gray slash of moonlight across the carpeted floor. Then Johnny turned to his left. He saw a tall, hulking, shadowy man sitting in a chair next to his bed. The figure looked like Father Higgins. And we will pause there. Well, it's the end of the chapter, so it's the end of chapter two.